I'm in Monmouthshire in South Wales and behind me is Gromont Castle. It's a ruined castle dating back 900 years. We're going to go in, take a look, then we'll go on to Skenfrith Castle and finally to White Castle. So join me on my Three Castles tour. So let's head inside, take a look at Gromont Castle. And that means heading across the drawbridge. So in true castle style, this one is surrounded by a moat with a drawbridge across. Now the moat itself no longer has any water in it, but back in the day, of course, it would have been flooded making uh, making attacking this castle a difficult job. Now the actual stone castle that you see here wasn't uh, wasn't the original castle. Originally it would have been built of the earthworks, so the the moat and then the artificial hill in the middle, and that would have been topped with timber battlements. So this castle was originally built, let's carry on inside, originally built in the late 10 hundreds, just after the Norman invasion of 1066. So this and the other two castles today were part of a line of defences against Welsh invaders. Of course, the Normans invaded England and conquered it, but you still had the Welsh to the west who would come in on raids. So. The, uh, the, new Norman, um, the new Norman regime wanted to protect its western border and hence built an awful lot of castles along the England-Wales border. Okay, so I'm in the central, I don't know what you call this, the central bailey of the castle. So let's take a look around. So like most of these castles, it's, it's now in ruins. The thing about castles is they became obsolete several centuries ago with the arrival of the cannon. And so these, uh, these once formidable defensive structures kind of fell into ruin as they weren't needed anymore. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's explore a bit. Let's start in this corner over here. Right, so this is one of the turrets with many windows. Now, as you can see, these windows are tall and narrow, and that was just the right shape to be able to shoot arrows through. So you could stand up there with your bow and arrow and fire out whilst having pretty good defense against any arrows that were incoming. There were several floors here. So you can see, part of, you can see where some of the floors were you can see a few holes in the side of the wall where the, um, the floor beams would have gone across. Let's see what is through this way. Okay, let's go explore some more. Tall chimney up here with a kind of ornate uh, masonry at the top, but no, no visible fireplace, which is a bit odd. You'd expect maybe a huge fireplace inside. Okay, so this makes more sense now. It would seem the fireplace was higher up, so there'd have been another floor above here, and that would have been the big fireplace, and who knows, maybe this was the part of the kitchens or something. Now these castles would usually have a well inside the castle so that if they were besieged, they had their own source of water. So this might be it down here. All right, let's get out of here and go and look at the rest of it. Okay, so a grand room with window openings and don't see any fireplaces yet. Now this looks like it would have been a two-story room, so 
if you imagine, you know, floor beams going across, there's another room over there with this dividing wall. So let's head on over. Oh, and there's an information sign as well. So maybe I can stop guessing and we can actually find something out. Okay. You can pause this here if you want. Okay, so I can see the fireplace there leading up to the chimney. Okay, let's go check out another bit. Okay, well, let's head to that big bit over there. I think that's where the action's at. Okay, so this is the tallest part of the structure surviving. So another turret with more narrow windows to shoot arrows out of. And of course, this would have been several floors. Well, let's head up these steps, see where they lead. Actually, first, this looks like the, yeah, that's the remains of a spiral staircase. Most of it's collapsed away, but you can kind of see the outline of it up there. Okay, up the stairs. I've picked a lovely day for this. Okay, well, this is the highest point I can actually get to. So I mentioned that when this castle was first built, it would have been timber and earthworks. Um, but in the early 1200s, they were upgraded. This part of the country was very important for the, uh, the English king to keep the invading Welsh raiders out. So the castles were upgraded to, to what you see today. I think the Great Hall over there was rebuilt and modernised at some point, but most of this castle probably dates from the, uh, the first half of the 1200s. Okay, back down the stairs. Okay, we have the remains of another kind of room here with an entrance. All right, let's head back to the car because we've got two more castles to see. Okay, so castle number two, which is Skenfrith Castle. So again, in Monmouthshire. All three castles we're seeing today are in Monmouthshire, South Wales. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go in and take a look. Right, I seem to have this place to myself. If I was here on a Saturday, especially in summer, this place would be heaving. But uh, yeah, on a weekday in the middle of winter, you can often just walk around this, not see anyone else. All right, so let's take a look around it. So like the previous castle, this wasn't originally stone. It would have been a um, earthworks and timber castle and then rebuilt in stone in the early 1200s as part of an upgrade program. Bit of info on this sign. Ah, okay, so a bit of info here. The, um, the raised ground level inside this castle was artificial. The sign back there tells me that they demolished the old Norman earthworks and piled all the earth up inside here to raise the ground level and uh, stop the castle from flooding. There's a river right next to this castle, which we'll go and look at in a moment. Of course, in the middle, we have the, uh, the central stone keep, so it's like a double defensive layer. I tell you what, let's start with the big tower. 
Okay, so another big round keep. Now you can see this would have had three floors or more, depending on how high it went. You can see the holes in the wall there where the, uh, the floor beams would have gone through. Okay, let's head back outside. Right, we've got some lower down rooms here, so we'll take a look. So these might have been the abandoned basement rooms. Of course, if you look at the ground level there, it's up above the top of these rooms. That was the um, artificial raising of ground level they did. These rooms still flooded, so were abandoned. And then here we are at a more ground level room. So presumably this one stayed in use. I think it was around 1300 that they abandoned those basement rooms. We have the remains of a fireplace there. Okay, let's check out this corner. Right, another small room and some kind of, ah, this is one of the corner turrets of the main defensive wall. Okay, so once again, this, uh, this internal area is all a bit empty now, but probably would have had, you know, um, timber and timber structures with slate roofs, etc., built up around the inside of the wall. Let's head up here. Now, I mentioned before that there's a river flowing by this castle. I can actually hear it roaring past. So let's, uh, let's head down there and take a look at it now. Okay, I can see the river. Yeah, quite a fast flow. I've never seen the river this high. I've been here a couple of times before and that river is normally just a very gentle flow, maybe six inches or a foot deep. So this river would have been an important supply route for the castle. So goods could have been brought upstream by boat or downstream um, and stopped here. There'd have been a kind of quayside here and in fact I think I'm guessing some of this stone here is just part of that original structure. So food, wine, whatever, barrels of provisions could be landed here by boat. Right, let's, uh, let's head back inside the castle. Of course this gate ahead would have been very useful. It would have been protected with a portcullis or a heavy door or something, but uh, when the goods are landed here, they're led in through this door and up into the castle. And up we go. So you can see just how high they raise the ground level in here to stop it flooding. So that's two castles down, one to go. Let's go and look at our final castle. Okay, so here we are at the third and final castle of this tour, and this one's my particular favourite. So this is White Castle, and it's the biggest of the three castles, and like the others, it was built just after the Norman invasion, and it would originally have been earthworks and timber. So as you can see, we've got this surrounding defensive ditch, uh, which would have been topped with timber battlements, just like the other castles, and then, like the other two, it would have been upgraded at a later date. One difference with this castle is that the inner bailey was upgraded sooner, but we'll take a look at that in a while. Okay, let's head inside, take a look. Okay, let's cross the first of two drawbridges. Right, so this is the outer castle now. This is the biggest of the three castles. So this, this outer area, 
surrounded by its defensive walls. This would allow enough space for grazing of animals, for example, which is a handy thing to have if you're besieged. If you've got an attacking army outside and no supplies coming in or out, yeah, having cattle and sheep on this land would keep you going for a while longer. Right, let's head over to the inner moat. So the castle ahead, that's the inner keep. And the board back there tells me that this was built in 1201. So a little bit before the, um, the other ones. This one got its stone upgrade first. Okay, so there we are, classic moat and drawbridge. And the still water in the moat. Okay, into the main heart of the castle now, under the stone arch. So if the outer defences failed, you then fall back on this uh, pretty sizeable inner keep. So we've got the same basic layout of circular towers in the corners and halfway along the walls and then straight walls between them. Let's, uh, well, let's pick somewhere to head over. Let's head this way first. Right, now I mentioned a castle would normally have its own water supply, a well that was actually accessible inside the castle so invaders couldn't cut off your water supply and that's what we seem to have here. So I'm guessing that's the well anyway. Here we have a circular tower which yeah I can just about see the bottom of that and I can see the holes in the walls for the floor beams to go through so like the other towers, it would have had several floors. I'm not sure what some of these little bits would have been for. Right, let's walk down into this turret. So we've got the narrow windows again for firing arrows out of. So if you were invading this castle, you'd have a tough job. You'd have to get past the outer battlements with all the dangers that, that that would hold for you. Then you'd have to cross the moat and then you'd have to climb up out of a wet moat up a steep bank and have a defending soldier here to contend with lobbing, well, firing arrows down at you and maybe throwing spears. This turret's pretty high. So once again, several floors with all the various window holes visible. Okay, back out into the main area. Ooh, there's a sign over there, so let's take a look what it says. Life on the inside. Right, so I mentioned before about kind of wooden structures. Um, built around the inside of the castle. This shows it pretty well. We've got, first of all, on the top of these defensive walls of the keep, there would have been wooden, an extra wooden floor with a, a pitched roof to add even more height. And then built around the inside, more timber structures and lots of timber staircases. So not the kind of, uh, not the kind of bare shell you see today. Okay, so one final bit. We'll head back to the kind of gatehouse of the inner keep. I can see some stairs and a gate, so what's that all about? And some kind of extra floor upstairs. Locked. Ah, that's where all the good stuff is. Oh, there's another bit over here I didn't notice. Right, let's have a look at this. Okay, another turret, and this one's got a little bit of staircase left. Not much though, but we'll go up as far as we can. Uh, 
OK, I won't risk it any higher than that. And yeah, again, several flaws. I think this would have had one, two, three, four flaws on this turret. So that, uh, that gate behind me that was locked, if you look at the top, there's a kind of wooden platform and a banister up there. So, I mean, I can't get in there, obviously, because the gate's locked, but there was a spiral staircase in there to the left when I looked up. So there is still a functioning staircase and, you know, whoever's got the key has access. There's probably a great view at the top. Right, let's head out back through the kind of main archway of the inner keep. I've just noticed something. In the wall here, there are two kind of holes, and I guess you'd have had beams coming out of those holes. You could slide them out, and they were probably there to support the door. So you close the door or the sliding portcullis, whatever, then slide these massive beams across, and that would stop anyone, you know, ramming the door in. Okay, let's head out, back across the inner drawbridge, and we'll walk down closer to the moat on that side. Yeah, what a great view. And nice to see a moat that uh, still has some water in it. So there you go, three castles in a single day. It's actually been um, about three castles in three hours for me because the, they're all huddled pretty close to each other, just a 10 minute drive away. So actually there's probably about six castles you could probably see in a single day because they are quite uh, dense in this part of England or Wales, should I say. But I think three is enough for one video because as I mentioned, you, you see too many castles in a single day and they all start to look a bit the same. This particular one, White Castle, is my favourite. Um, one thing all these castles have in common is that they're just, they're just open. You know, you don't, uh, you don't pay to come in. They're just sitting there by the side of the road. You park your car and in you walk. And uh, yeah, I really like that about them. There are bigger, better preserved castles around here, but you know, you've got to buy tickets. You have tour guides and all of this, but to find treasures like this just you know sitting there by the side of the road yeah it's uh, i'm really glad these things are still around anyway that's the end of this video so i hope you enjoyed watching it and i hope to see you in the next one